Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Minister Danielle Jeremiah of Spirit and Truth Deliverance Ministries. And I am coming today with another word. Um, today's word is coming from Matthew, the sixth chapter. And the question that God is asking on today is who is really in charge of your ministry? Huh? Who is in control of your ministry? Is it him or you? All right. Is it him or you? Do you have a look at me, look at me ministry that glorifies yourself? Or does the ministry that you have glorify God? This is what God uh, wants to talk about on today. Um, I will probably come back on Saturday and we'll talk about generational curses. Okay. Um, but today, this is what God wants me to talk about. Do you have a look at me, look at me ministry? Who is really the head of your ministry? Who is getting the glory out of your ministry? Who is getting the glory out of the things that you say that you're doing for Christ? Huh? Is it you or him? Because God wanted me to talk to you about this one today. Last week, message came from Ezekiel and the Lord was saying that he was looking for a remnant of many women of God that would teach truth, basically. That would teach truth and they would not be afraid of the faces of the people. Huh? They would not be afraid of the faces of the people. And, and one of the things he said is they won't listen to you because they don't listen to me. He said, but I'm giving you a forehead stronger than Flint. Huh? So that you'll be able to teach them the truth whether they will hear or whether they will not hear. Okay? So I'm, so he needs people who will preach the hard stuff. So again, who is your ministry glorified? Is it glorifying you or him? Is it all about self? Huh? Is the, is the Lord being lifted in your ministry? Or is it you that's being lifted? Because if you if you if you exalt yourself before men, then you already have your reward. God don't need to reward you because you already have your reward. Hallelujah. So we need to we need to take that into account today. We need to think about what is our motive? Really, what is our motive for ministry? Is it so you can be church famous? Or is your motive for ministry to follow Christ as He leads? And you follow. Look at you. I, I want you to look at. No, God wants you to look at your motives on today. Who is truly in charge of the ministry? So, where the Lord led me at today was Matthew's the sixth chapter. And so I'm going to read it in your hearing. Take heed. Look very carefully. Okay. Listen very carefully. Take heed that you do not your elms before men to be seen of them. Again, what is your motives? Otherwise, you have no reward of your father which is in heaven. Listen very carefully. Do not your elms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of God which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine elms, do not sound a trumpet before men, before thee, as the hypocrite do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest am, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thy elms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. So it even goes down and it talks about prayer. When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrite are. For they have to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But he says, but with thou, when thou prayest, enter thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which sieve in secret shall reward thee. Okay? Then he goes down and even talks about fasting. 
Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Really, I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fast, anoint thy head, wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret. Thy father, which sin in secret, shall reward thee openly. Who are you seeking glory from? from? Is it God or man? Because if you're seeking glory from man in ministry, if you're seeking to be church famous, then you don't need to be doing this work for God. Because that's not what, that, that's not what it's about. What is our charge? Our charge is to preach the gospel. That's what the charge is. The charge is to preach the gospel. Anything else is not preaching. It's nothing more than a motivational speech. Okay? You telling somebody constantly that they're going to get a house and a car. A house and a car. God is dealing out all these blessings. But their lives not right. You're not helping them. So who is your ministry really about? You telling them that God is going to bless them financially, but they don't even know how to balance their checkbook. Who is this ministry really about? Anyway, let's let's go. What 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 what, what is he talking about with these elms? The elms is food and gifts given to the needy. Okay, so you have some who like to give to others, and then they want to broadcast it everywhere. You know, I gave so-and-so, so-and-so, this and this and that and another, so that they can get glory. You know, if, if I hadn't helped them, then they would be in the street. If I hadn't paid their rent, they would be in the street. If I hadn't given them food, they would be hungry. Then they take it, they broadcast it on Facebook that they helped somebody. You already have your reward. You already have your reward. Why, why would God bless you? If he, even he's not in control of that. You're exalting yourself because you want somebody to talk about your goodness and how good you are. How lovely you are. God said, who's in charge of the ministry? Is it you or me? Who's following who? God said, I will never follow you. So then that means that I'm not in charge. I'm not a part of it. God needs somebody that's going to preach the hard stuff. Your righteousness ain't nothing but filthy rags. Huh? Your righteousness ain't nothing but, to God ain't nothing but filthy rags. He said you already have your reward. You already have your reward because you've exalted yourself above me. You already have it. He sees you as nothing more than a hypocrite. He sees you as nothing more than a hypocrite. I didn't say these are the words that Jesus spoke here in this Bible. In this Bible. They, they all in red. Jesus was saying a lot in this Bible. Everything in red is what he said. He said, what did he say? He says, take heed. Do not your elms. Don't give to the poor and the needy to be seen, before men to be seen to them. Otherwise, you have no reward of God. God said, I don't got no reward for you. Huh? I don't have no reward. You, you may have given to the needy, but... but don't expect no reward because you, you felt the need to broadcast. There's somebody that need to be prayed for. And you broadcasting that. They done told you that they need prayer. And you 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 you're going out telling all that business. Instead of going into your home or your secret closet and praying for them. From what they told you. You got to be like a hypocrite. And broadcast it to everybody. 
take an opportunity to gossip and tell people their business. The devil is a lie. You need to go on and sit down somewhere. Even when it come down to fasting, you want somebody, look at me, look at me, oh, I'm, I'm broadcasting to everybody that I'm fasting. You don't have to tell them. You go to their house and they offer you some food. Just say, oh, oh, make some excuse. You don't have to broadcast to everybody that you're not, that, that you're not eating because you're fasting. Because you're trying to look good to people. You already have your reward. Oh, you know, she fasted, Mom. She fasted. She didn't pray for sister so-and-so. They about to get set out of their house. She didn't pray for them and blah, 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 blah. Now you done started the gossip mill. Who is in charge of the ministry? Is it him or you? Who is to get the glory? Is it him or you? What is your motives? Is this about God or is it about you? Bible says in James, the fourth chapter, 10 verse, what does it say? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Again, humble. Recognize that he is God, that he is in control of everything. And, and then have a modest view of your own importance. Some of us think too highly of ourselves. We're too confident in our own abilities. Especially being the men and women of God. If you are if you are if you are outside of um being God's people, let's just say it like that. Then you have all the confidence in your abilities that you have, that you want to have. I ain't even touching on that. But if you're a person of God, your confidence should be in Him. Not in yourself and your own abilities. And I've learned that since May. That my confidence is not in Danielle. I don't walk around here no more like a stubborn goat. Because I know that there is nothing. Not to have no confidence in this flesh. Not to have no confidence in my own doing. But my confidence is in God. My trust is in God and his word and his will. When you humble yourself and you recognize that without him you are nothing. And you submit yourself to him. God will lift you up. I am a witness. I'm not telling, I'm not sit, sitting here preaching and teaching you nothing that I don't know myself. Huh? Without God, I'm nothing. I have learned how to have faith. I have learned how to be obedient because contrary to belief, God is not looking for perfection. Because while we're in this flesh, he knows that we will never be perfect. God is looking for obedience. He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for obedience. Because as you learn more and more of his will, and that flesh comes into subjection, hallelujah, and you allow the spirit to take over. Then once the spirit take over, which is the spirit of God, if you're saved and born again, that lives on the inside of you, you will reach perfection once the spirit is able to reign, move, act. And that spirit, that flesh of yours comes under subjection. Then you'll have salvation in all three of your parts. The spirit, the soul, and the flesh. That's a whole nother teaching. But we like to walk around doing things our way. The stronger I get in the spirit, hallelujah, the more the soul in the flesh dies. Hallelujah. And we don't want the soul in the flesh just to die and dry up, but we want the soul to, and the, the soul in the flesh to be under control of the spirit. Once the spirit is controlling the soul in the flesh, ha, 
Then that's how you reach perfection. But with your flesh, you're never going to reach perfection. Huh? That's why it's important that we humble ourselves in the sight of God. And that he will lift us up. And I have seen the Lord. Listen, let me tell you. I'm living this scripture right now about the alms given to the needy and the poor. Listen. I was in a, in a situation not too long ago. And God told me to help somebody. Now here I am helping this person. And I didn't have two cents to rub together. God said, help them. And when I helped them, the person that was with me didn't understand why I did it. They didn't understand why I took my last and helped this person. I said, that's because God told me to help him. I didn't think nothing of it. I went and I did what God said to do. And not even the, ne the next day, the next day. I received an unexpected check in the mail for more than what I gave them. God will reward you openly. Then the jobs, hallelujah, then the jobs for the big business begin to pick up. And God said, you helping that person without grudges or grudgingly catapulted you into the next season of your life. You do it in secret. When I came home, the only reason that this person knew about it was because the person was with me when I helped the person. What I did for him is not important. But when I helped the person, this person was with me and they did not understand. You got two pennies right now this moment to rub together. You're going to take your last and you want to give it to somebody. I said, look, I have to trust what God said. From the moment that I did that, God said it catapulted you into your next season. You never know if the person that God wants you to help is really an angel unaware. Now I'm starting to get so much business that pretty soon I'm going to have to have somebody to help me. That's what happens, hallelujah, when you walk in obedience to God. He said, if you give in secret, he will reward you openly. Then a lot of times God give me people to pray for. The people don't even know that I'm praying for them. But what did he say? When you, when you pray for them in secret, I will reward you openly. The other day I was given the opportunity to tell the young lady that I had been praying for. I had been praying for her for the last week or so. She didn't even know what I had been praying for. There are some people praying for you that you don't even know that's praying for you. To help you make it through. I told a sister, I said, I will get down and battle with you. You know why? Because I've already been doing it. And if the opportunity had never come up, I probably never would have told her that I was praying for her victory and what she was going through. That's how God works if you pray in secret. Huh? He will reward you openly. Couple days I even fasted for the young lady. She had no idea. But I believe God for victory in her life. Just like I believe God for victory in your life. I pray for everybody in this group. Corporately, of course. <laughs> you know, I don't go through. <clears throat> Because we got 202 members now. So I don't go through and pray for everybody individually. But I pray for you corporately. That whatever you're going through. That God will bless your life. And then the thing about it is. Is that if he gives me somebody individually to pray for. I'll pray for him. Person don't even know that you're praying. That's where the victory come at right there. That's where the victory come at right there. In your own life. That while you're yet praying for them, that stuff is dropping off of you. God will reward you. You say, oh my God, Lord, that's it. Oh, they're going through so much. Let me turn down my plate and let me fast on their behalf. 
They don't even have to know that you fasted. Why you're fasting? Why you're praying? Why you're giving? And you're giving it and you're not being a hypocrite. You're giving it and you're not doing it grudgingly. And you're not complaining while you're doing it. God will reward you openly. So again, I ask you, who is the ministry about? It's not about some piece of paper that you that you carry that make you licensed to be a minister. It's about the humbleness of your heart. And your ability to follow what God is saying. So I ask you again on today. Who is in charge of the ministry? Like I said last week. If you are not willing to tell people the truth. You need to just hang up your Bible. Take off that collar from around your neck. Hang that robe up. Because guess what? God don't want nothing to do with your ministry. If you're not willing to war and battle with the men and women of God, God don't want nothing to do with your ministry because it's not about him. You want glory for men? You want to be church famous? God don't got nothing to do with it. He don't want nothing to do with that mess. Why are you singing? Why are you playing the organ and the, the piano? Why are you preaching? Why are you doing evangelism? Is it to see how many souls you can bring in? God don't want no part of that. He don't want nothing to do with that. What is your motive? That's what God is saying on today. What is your motive? Why do you do what you do? He said, I don't need you to be perfect. I need you to be obedient. I need you to be a follower. I need you to humble yourself. I need you to recognize that nothing that you do in your flesh will ever please me. What I see is the spirit. What he sees is the spirit. What he sees is the spirit. Know ye not that you are the temple of the living God. Do you carry the spirit of God on the outside? Speak, Holy Ghost. Do you carry the spirit of God on the inside? Do you carry his spirit on the inside? Is he the one that's leading you? Is he the one that's guiding you? Huh? You got to know the difference between when your soul is speaking and the flesh is speaking. The soul and the flesh is speaking. That's, that's a difference between when the spirit is speaking and then your soul and your flesh is speaking. The spirit hears from and caters to God. The flesh and the soul, the well, the soul caters to the flesh. The soul wants to do whatever the flesh wants to do. And that's clearly not something that God wants to do. Who is leading God in your ministry? Huh? Who is leading God in your Who is in control? If you have a look at me, look at me, look at me ministry where you love glory for men, then you need to have several seats and sit down somewhere. You need, it's time for you to evaluate why you do what you do. What is your motive? Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things shall be added unto you. A lot of us are not seeking the kingdom of God. We're seeking the kingdom of whoever and whoever. We're seeking our own kingdoms. And we're exalting our own selves. So God can't use us, and he can't move, and he can't act, and you can't get to the next level in your life. You can't get to the next level in your ministry because you're not recognizing who God is. But I'm telling you once a day, as I close up my notes, my God, listen, this God that we serve is a big God. He is a big God. You just have got to allow him to move and act in your life. Now, every day when I get up, I say, God, I bring my soul and my flesh under subjection of your spirit. And God, when my soul and my flesh is acting up and trying to be in control of my being, let me realize what I'm doing. There are some relationships that I, I there are some relationships that I even started in my flesh 
that I'm starting to move away from because these relationships do not glorify God. They don't glorify God. Listen, anything in my life that's going on that's not glorifying God, I don't want no part of it. I don't want no part of it. Who? Who? Who is your... Who is in charge of your ministry? Who's, who's in charge? Daily, daily, daily. I can see God delivering me from stuff. Huh? I can see God daily delivering me from stuff. Daily delivering me from me. Huh? One of the biggest things in life that we need to be delivered from it's a lot of time not other people, but we need to be delivered from ourselves. I went to college and I took the psychology class. And in the psychology class, it was all about self, all about self actualization the hierarchy of needs, huh? That I got to be at the, the top of the hierarchy or whatever it is, the pyramid, huh? It got to be all about me. Huh? That's that's how the world see it. But when you are in Christ, it's about Him. It's not about you. It's about Him. So I tell you that if you seek to have glory with men, you've already received your award on today. God wants you to look at your ministry. He wants to look at you, wants you to look at yourself. He wants you to look at the things that you're doing and see. And recognize, take heed to see what is your motive. What is your motive? So I will probably be back on Saturday talking about those generational curses. But I'm, I'm, I just thank God for moving on today. Men and women of God, you have got to be willing to teach the hard stuff. And I'm not talking about what your religiosity. Religiosity. Preaching your religion to people. Your doctrines to people. I'm talking about preaching this word. Preaching this word in season and out of season. It ain't got nothing to do with the traditions of men. It ain't got nothing to do with legalism. And it's not, it has nothing to do with all these doctrines that men set up to keep people in bondage. To keep people in bondage to devils. A lot of these doctrines are bringing religious demons into your life. I'm talking about preaching and teaching the word of God. Have nothing to do with that. We follow after tradition so much that we miss Christ. I'm talking about the word. I know that the word is changing my life. I know the word is changing my life. Huh? Somehow I thought I was grandfathered into salvation. But it wasn't until January 16th of 2013 that God saved my life. I had to let go of everything religious, all the traditions of the church, everything I learned growing up. I said, God, I need you to strip all of this away from me because I need to see you. I don't want that tradition. I don't want that legalism. I don't want that doctrine. And God began to show me himself. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And on January the 16th of 2013, riding in my green Toyota Corolla across the Hanover Street Bridge after I left Walmart, God told me, and after hearing the true gospel and understanding the resurrection. Riding across that bridge. I was, I'll never forget it. I was in the middle of the hand of a street bridge. And the Lord said, the slate has been made clean. Your sins have been forgiven. But it wasn't until that religious demon had been cast down. We're going to talk about that too because I'm going to do a video with my salvation experience. So when you get saved, you're continuously working out your soul salvation. And, and even now, my soul salvation is being worked out. 
And each and every day, God is delivering me, delivering me from something else. Spirits are walking away. Stuff that you would, you, listen, that's a whole nother video. Stuff that you think that you have been delivered from that's been harbored and hidden on the inside. Deliverance. Every day. Deliverance from past stuff. God is good. Anyway, I hope that this message today has helped you. And I pray God that he will continue to bless you and keep you. And if you want to hear about the generational curses, you can join me on Saturday. I think I'll do a live broadcast on Saturday. Be blessed. Father, I ask that you lead, guide them, teach them, help them, show them your way, show them who you are. Father, cover them in your blood from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Father, we thank you. I thank you. And I give you glory and praise for every soul, every spirit that's here in this group. God, I thank you that the group is constantly growing. And I thank you, God. Because, God, I will follow as you lead. All these blessings in the name of Yahushua Muhammad, Shia, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah.